Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Oh, we're having a war. We're having a war. Hey, everybody. A civil war. Hello, everyone. My name is David Bell. My name's Tom Ryman. And we just watched Civil War. Civil War. A very, a, a, a polite war. Yeah. It was wild when Spider-Man showed up, though. Citizens of America, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Mr. President, do you regret the use of airstrikes against American citizens? Yeah, that was pretty unexpected. Unexpected. Yeah. yeah. When when Captain America's mighty shield bounced off the side of Jesse Plemons' head <laughs> to rescue them <laughs> in that one scene. Uh, uh, um. All right. So, uh, hello, so spoilers. <laughs> spoilers for Civil War. Uh, this is Alex Garland's Civil War, uh, directed and written by Alex directed Garland. Directed and written by Garland. Alex Garland, starring half of the cast of Devs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alex Garland and then has also his Kirsten people Dunst. that he uses. Yeah, yeah, and then also Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> yeah. Kirsten Dunst this and movie, the cast of Devs. Yep. This movie uh, is fairly controversial, and uh, I mean by design, one yes. imagines. Uh, yeah. It was written pre-January 6th, um, but of course it was probably not, hits it different It was not post. made p- pre-January 6th, and I want to talk about that a lot. Okay. Um. All right, I I'm I don't know. Like right now, it's like poker. I don't know what cards you have, and you don't know what cards I have. All right, we haven't talked about. You just got out of it. Just I've got had out a of day it. to kind of think about to it. Think about it. All right, so let me tell you what I think. Having just got out of it, um, okay. I think this is not Alex Garland's best movie. I think it's very good. Um, I think it's. I think it is a little superficial, but it's no more superficial than Ex Machina. I think it's very similar to Ex Machina in its approach and in its. Uh, perspective i think this movie is an indictment of america 100 percent an indictment of america and americans and how americans will simply deal with the civil war if it happens so i like i like where your head's at um i have a slightly different view of it sure and so i'm excited (laughs) i think so at the start of this i think it goes without saying that this is an extremely well-made movie oh yeah the sound design the the um, sound design's amazing yeah, it wants it wants the violence to feel scary, and it is just through the sounds of the bullets. Because it's not graphic; you, most of it is you don't even see most of it. Yeah, and that's uh, the but you do yeah. see a lot. You like do, you do see, you see a lot, but you it's see very a, violent. You see a lot of the aftermath, or like the moment of as yeah. captured by war correspondence, which is very intentional. Yeah, I think um, so. Like in terms of what this movie means. Um, I do think it felt so. I I agree. There was this thing going a lo- around where there people are mad that the journalists in it are impartial. Um, I don't think they actually are. So that's one thing. I I think politically speaking, um, it's a little cowardly. A little. And what I mean by bit, that yeah. is that it is trying to have its cake and eat it too. Um, I think it's kind of gonna fall on deaf ears a little bit. Uh. And I think that's a little bit because of some missteps in the movie. Uh, I agree with you that it it is, in fact, about that, about the idea of how Americans will kind of like there's a very specific scene in this movie where they go to a town that's not affected by the war and they're acting like everything's fine. Right. Yeah. And there's snipers on the rooftop. Yeah. Um and, and it's, so like it's, for, it's like the Kirsten Dunst is like, man, this is like a place I, I forgot about. And the old black guy says, this is a place I remember. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so like, I guess there's a lot, there's a lot of pieces here. 
Um, I think it's I think it's a lot like uh, let me let me get this out like I think it's a lot like Ex Machina yeah. and I think it's similar to when uh, we talk about this a bit on Spielboys because Spielberg does this a lot too, where it it'll be examining a topic and just s- saying a lot of things that are true or feel true about the topic, but not delving too deep in them, just presenting the whole array, the whole smorgasbord of things that are around this topic. And that's very much what ha- is happening in Ex Machina. Because Ex Machina doesn't Ex Machina doesn't make a judgment at the end. It asks right. you to do that. And this kind of does the same thing, where it just it puts all of the information out, and it's like, look, this is the situation. We don't know what the conflict is. We don't know what the nature of the conflict is, but we can infer it. Like, they... they in- I they include enough buzzwords like the president dissolving the FBI, um, the Antifa massacres. Like you can, you know, you can kind of infer what the conflict is. And also like they point out that the separatist uh, coalitions are not on the same page. Like I, I've seen a lot of hand wringing over California and Texas being the Western forces, but they point out in the movie that they're not organized. They're not working right. together. Um, so, I, that, yes. Anyway, I just wanted I, to get all that out. Like the movie's getting criticism for being superficial, which I totally see and totally get. But I don't think the movie was trying to be anything other than that. I think this movie was literally that scene where she's photographing herself in the mirror. Right? It's holding a mirror up, and it's like this is this is an indictment of a culture that has been so relatively safe. Certain certain strata of of American culture has been safe from modern conflict totally. It has only experienced modern conflict through a camera lens. So there's this fetishistic desire for a civil war. There's almost, there's a glamorization of it. You know, like the, um, I don't know that you would have, maybe you would, I don't know, but just speaking as my experience as as an American, like the lost cause myth of the South has created like such a glamorized, um, romanticized idea of civil war and the nobility of civil war and standing up, you know. And this movie is very much about how, like, it may or may not be true, but the movie seems to be suggesting Americans are uniquely in this position because they've never experienced this. It's definitely. I I, I read a review because I've been I've been reading a lot because I'm, I like I said I came out of it. Almost not sure what to feel. I had there's there's a few layers here, but um, that it's more about other countries. Like it's kind of more about how we think about wars in other countries yeah. as opposed to a civil war here. And that yeah, we don't we trivialize them. We don't think about what's going on in these places. And so to like set it here is to try to like almost humanize it in a way. I think. It's it's very muddled. Like I yeah, think the I think movie, he's, I think right. he's literally just trying to put it in America's backyard because it's yeah. important to keep in mind Alex Garland is not an American filmmaker. He's English. So this yeah. is this is a movie about an American civil war from someone who is not American. I think so I I guess I think the movie failed. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. I disagree, so, but uh, please. Yeah, I'll go into why. Uh, so we're talking about the politics. They mentioned the Antifa massacre, mm-hmm. and it's you a can, three-term you can president. Spin that either way, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can spin that either way. But Who's I'm saying when you who? take it into consideration with the other things that they drop, like the dissolution of the FBI, the fact that it's an EPA truck that gets bombed in the beginning by the it's by a right-wing the, uh, president. <laughs> it's a right. It's Donald Trump. It's a right-wing yes. president. <laughs> but but because they don't just say that. It's that's what makes it a little politically cowardly because they want they want like people like Tim Pool, idiots like Tim Pool to be like, oh, actually, it was Antifa doing the massacre. They want they they want they want everybody to see it. So they don't want to take a side. I know why they heavily imply a side. Right. It's implied that the that the the U.S. is. Well, I mean, they they go back and forth. uh, And that's part of the I think that's part of the commentary about the, the war correspondence, which I don't. That's the part that I feel is the most muddled. Here's the problem is that I don't think this was the point, right? And I've seen that argument. A lot of people are going, "Uh, you always don't get it. The point is what what sides. And it's like, but you made a movie called Civil War. It's coming out right before an election. Maybe in 20 years from now, we'll be able to look at this film a different way. But right now, making, it's a very, it's a, this is a, it's a, it's a very like incendiary thing to do, right? Is to make a movie about American Civil War right be- 
be for a very heated election and to make these little hints, right? To even mention Antifa is to say like, okay, this isn't an alternate reality. This is our reality. So he's calling a lot of attention. yeah. Yeah. He's calling a lot of attention to the politics, but he's not saying anything politically. He's trying to step back and kind of nerf it politically. He and is, I, I, but he's not being specific to American politics. Yeah, but he, he uh, like just mentioning Antifa yeah. makes me go like, well, you've given us something, right? Like you gave, you shouldn't have mentioned, everything should have been made up um, if you were going to not make it about mm, like maybe. politics. Like I think, I think the more incendiary thing to be releasing this at the same time as is what's going on in Gaza because that's what this movie's about. Right. This movie is about our ability to ignore this shit. But I think, see, this is what I mean is I think everybody's going to forget that because it's called civil war. It, because it became made an American thing. Um, like you, he could have just made a movie about war journalists. Right. Um, but he did it. He made the setting America, and so because right, I, th- I think he's mad at Americans. <laughs> oh yeah, but <laughs> this, this is, is what I, I mean this is an by being a failure view of America. But yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Continue. This is what I mean that it's a very well made movie that I think is a failure. I don't think it's going to do anything. So I I watched it in a crowd that was kind of shocking, and what I mean by that, and maybe you had a different experience, but this crowd was fascinating to me, and I went through a kind of journey with them because I want to talk about the other. The other thing about this movie is it's supposed to be showing how horif- horrifying war is, right? The violence. Um, that's a big layer of this is to show like, look at what it's sort doing. of. It's more about showing how we're conditioned to just ex- accept it, how, the banality of it. Right. What's shocking to me is that exact thing was happening in the audience I was in. And what I mean yep. was, like, at first I thought it was, like, Marvel brain rot, but I actually don't blame the audience. So what, what happened very fast that was shocking to me is my audience started, like, uh, laughing when the joke was, when there was a joke, they'd laugh. When there was a tense moment where, uh, I mean, again, spoilers, where Jesse Plemons is asking people where they're from, and the guy says Hong Kong, my audience went, like, oh, you idiot, why would you do that? When he gets hit by a car, everybody cheered, like Captain America just showed up, like, what? yeah and it was that throughout they were watching it like it was fucking independence day and they were watching like the dog get saved they were watching a movie oh um and the thing is is that at first i was like i can't fucking believe they're having so much fun watching this horrifying movie that's supposed to be about how violence is terrible and then i realized the movie sets that up for example that scene i'm describing where jesse plemons which is he's amazing obviously yeah he kills those two guys and gets um saved that is just a scene from a movie like any other hollywood movie they introduce two characters right the scene before the moment they introduce them i said well those two are dead and then they kill them off in the next scene yeah but you're and so ultimately they don't like they don't there's no, they don't like uh, compared to this, like no country for old men or the Sopranos or anything that's dealt with violence a lot to be, to really show the effects of violence. You have to kind of be anti-narrative in my opinion. And what I mean by that is like spoilers for no country for old men. They show a death in a very anticlimactic way, right? Um, the Sopranos famously ends in a way that basically goes like, no, you don't get to see how this story ends. And this movie kind of wants to have it cake. It's, it's cake and eat it too when it comes to how it's showing this violence. It is basically telling a Hollywood story that is very much the same beats as any other adventure movie. But it's trying to also tell us how bad violence is. And I feel like it doesn't accomplish both of those things. Or it doesn't accomplish that second thing because I think, of the first. I think the violence gets downplayed a lot, and that isn't as impactful as it maybe should have been. But I think it's less about narrative structure being like a Hollywood movie and more about that's kind of what he's saying about war correspondence, right? Like he's saying the duty... This is what I think he's saying, because this is the most muddled part of the film, is, is what right. it's saying about journalists and journalism, and the act and importance of documenting things like this um, at great personal risk, and even when you're just documenting the the widespread, massive loss of human life, it needs to be documented, right? Because what's the alternative? We don't know about it. 
Right. Um, so it's more. I I sus- I think that the 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 reason the movie ultimately comes away with not really making you. F- it it kind of it it doesn't make you feel the horror of violence it makes you not feel it and i i I think that's intentional because that's what the characters are feeling like that's the journey of kaylee spaney the the young war correspondent who tags along is she learns how to shut off her humanity right she learns like uh, she learns how to stop freaking out like she has the journey like she gets shown the two guys hanging in the car wash by the the uh, separatist dude um, but who's more genial and and wants his photo taken and is actually kind of a nice guy, you know, in, in contrast to Jesse Plemons, who's a U.S. Army guy, but he's a fucking psychopath. Right. Um, and she gradually, like, puts a cap on her emotions because she has a huge emotional response to that scene. Like, you got to put a cap on that. You have to not, just not think about it or else you won't get through this. And then she almost gets shot. And then she asks Kirsten Dunst, like, if I had gotten shot, would you have just filmed me? Uh, and she's like, what do you think? Um, and like later she climbs through cars on the open, like we see her taking more chances and being more cavalier and getting more into the shit, like photographing dead bodies until eventually in the, in the climax at act three, when the Western forces are storming the white house and she's with them, like on the front lines, she's not reacting to anything. She almost gets killed. Kirsten Dunst pushes her out of the way and gets shot and killed in the process. And she just photographs Kirsten Dunst and then leaves her body in the hallway to photograph the president being executed, which is the end of the film. Like, that's why I think the movie comes away with... I don't think... I don't actually think the the movie is trying to... uh, I think it wants you... I think it wants you to feel horrified by the violence, but... But not... (sighs) It's not trying to, f- mm, it's not like displaying that. Uh, I'm, uh, it's like, hard. Like you, you, you I mean, think about it later it and you really, because he's trying to make you okay with the horrifying violence. And it's not until later when you're reflecting on it that you're like, wait, like yeah. that was a scene where Jesse Plemons was pouring lie or lime on a mass grave of an entire town full of people he just killed for, I don't know. We don't know what reason we can see that it was right. for no reason, probably. Um, and then the the old guy comes in and saves them by hitting Jesse Plemons with the car and they all get in. And we just, like we forget that it's at, you know, like Kaylee Spanny gets knocked into the mass grave and we just sort of forget that it's a mass grave and she gets yanked out. Like, I think that's intentional. Like, I think you don't realize it until uh, I that's how I'm interpreting is that was his intent, where it's like the film is about how these characters are losing their humanity. And it's Kirsten Dunst and the old guy both reject it and they end up dead. I was gonna say, Kirsten, basically, Kirsten Dunst's character and the the new the young girl basically swap places. Yeah, they're exactly um, exactly, and we can like emotionally, they emotionally swap places. At the end, one of the things that happens, Kirsten Dunst's arc kind of completes where she just loses it, like in the middle of combat, yeah, she, she just out. starts weeping and she freaks a, out. She has a full blown panic attack, and they just yeah. it's one of my favorite scenes in the and movie. Her act of saving her is something she would never have done at the beginning. No, she never would have done it at the beginning of the movie. No, yeah. absolutely not. Um, she only does it because that's she saw Sammy do it, and Sammy gets killed saving them. The old guy, yeah. the old guy who said the same thing. He's like, "You can't do this. You're all going to get killed. It's stupid that you're going out there." And they kept saying, "You're old. You need to stay back. You're old. You can't run. You're going to slow us down." He ends up fucking saving them and getting shot to death in the process. So, like, and we can sort of infer like Kaylee Spaney gets uh, invited onto the uh, trip with them because Kirsten Dunst's partner, this guy Joel, um invites her along and you sort of it's it's never explicit but it's implied that he invited her along because he was hitting on her and he's hoping to maybe have sex with her um and so there's like this implication that like maybe that's how kirsten dunst got into i don't know there's there's a there's a subtext there about women's role yes. in this that maybe i'm reading too much into but anyway um it just there's it was like the passing of the torch but the most like the last image of the movie of of her watching dunst get shot and we see her make the decision because she's trying to decide whether she's going to be a human or whether she's going to be a documentarian in that moment. And she decides to be a documentarian and just films her friend and mentor dying and then runs into the Oval Office to see Nick Offerman get shot. And so we're watching the passing of the torch in the worst way possible. And I think that's the ultimate message of the movie, right? Is this is the world we are leaving for our young people. 
I, and this I is how we are right. training them to exist in this world by detaching I, from their humanity. I, I don't necessarily think that's entirely true. I think that's what the movie is saying. Oh, no. Yeah, I think you're right. But I think it still fails at saying that because I think the other stuff is so loud. For example, the ending. Um, like you're saying, the ending is she her losing her humanity um, to go get the shot. Why do we need to see the shot at the end? Like, why is that the ending moment then? Why is, because oh, see, we got him. Um, and it ends on almost why, like a cool why, line. Where he's like, why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it, because why that's wouldn't not what it, it's about. Why wouldn't it be dragging Muammar Gaddafi out into the street and ripping him limb from limb? Like, it's, you, it's killing the American president. But isn't that the part? So isn't that pandering to the wrong feelings? And what I mean by that is you're watching this movie and that's what you want to see. You want to see it get completed you want to see the civil war get done you want to see the the bad guy get ripped out and yeah until you get to the end and realize you don't want it anymore or maybe or maybe you don't want it anymore but that's the thing is the movie doesn't really treat it that way i I, I disagree oh i disagree man that whole scene with her watching dunce die that's asking us the audience but that's not the last we accept it i mean it's it's right before it yes and that's the thing is we're used to these plot points what i mean by that is like we're used to heroic character dies before you know they throw the ring in the mountain um and and by showing that they're like but they did it and we're celebrating and like it's this last scene where he goes i need a quote and he says don't let them kill me and he's like that'll "That'll do do. like it's 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 a very badass moment and that's what i mean is like i feel like the movie wants to be both it wants to have kind of these cool scenes disagree Um, but i I think that muddles the message you're describing i see that i completely disagree i think the point of that scene was to hollow it out it was to hollow out the victory right it's like it's like when you this is a bad maybe not the best example not a fully bad example but when you finally get to the return of the jedi and vader dies you don't want him to die anymore like when so when you finally get to the end of this movie it's like it's the thing we've been wanting the whole time and you get there and it's like oh this is this doesn't feel right this feels wrong and then it happens and it's just like it's supposed to be this badass thing and then it just kind of ends i mean i don't even know if it's supposed to be this badass thing like he's well, that's a- the thing he's asking him for a quote right and he says please don't let them kill me he says that'll do because that's like those are the quotes you get from these people, from these despots that get ripped out of seats of power. It's always sure. some embarrassingly, or not even embarrassingly, some nakedly human thing. It's always some nakedly human thing. But that's because he's the bad guy in that moment. My audience didn't pick up on any subtleties there. They saw the bad guy die. I, they don't care that it's the president. I, like, for dude, example, that is, I'm just saying I am arguing that may be how the audience you were in took it. That is not how the movie I saw presented it. I, I just I'm not sure how much of a difference there's going to be. That's why I'm I think this movie um, might have. I, I still think it kind of failed at what it was trying or any message it was trying to make. Well, I think I've seen a lot of reviews that say the, the, the way to interpret this film is to not think much about it. Like, oh, it's really good if you just right don't think all. about it. That's the thing is like, I don't think so either. I, I agree that he was trying to say something. I think it got lost. And I think there's just, there's too many levels to it. Um, the fact that he's dealing with journalists, the, the, I don't know, maybe this is because we know people who do this stuff, maybe. But like the journalists right away didn't feel they felt almost too cynical for me. Um, it like a, a character like Kirsten Dunst. I'm like, do people like that actually exist? Do they exist that way? Like they kind of he's kind of dumping a lot of symbolism just on her to represent this relationship we have. But I would argue the people who are there taking the pictures aren't unaffected by it at all. And are impartial. No, but you get you become jaded. I'm sure. I mean, there's photo war correspondence and photojournalism is not a new thing, even though it's you know right. ha- having a, having a moment right now. Um, but I'm not sure. It's like ultimately it's a, what he's saying. Many many it. decades old. I think what he's saying, like like uh, okay, like I said at the beginning, I think he's just laying a table out of stuff. 
and not making a whole lot of judgment calls about it. So I think what he's saying is that in order to be a war correspondent like this, you have to tamp down some of your humanity. And I think he's saying that, therefore, extrapolated from that, that detachment of humanity is disseminated in how these things are covered, particularly in America. And I don't think he's laying that entirely or even mostly at the feet of journalists. I think it's just there on the table of things he's laying out for us. But I think that's the problem, is that he's just laying these things out kind of openly. And like like you're saying, which is like letting the audience make these moral decisions mm-hmm. or something like that. And it sounds like your why... audience sure sure did make some judgment calls. Exactly. But I think the movie also... If you're not like, see, if you're not like a film nerd, if you're not thinking about what everything means necessarily, and you're just like, okay, it's a, it's a Saturday. I'm going to go out, watch a movie. Let's see this movie. I saw some trailers for it. Yeah. You're not going to, you're not going to think about it that much, especially if you're not online. And so like, you just think like, okay, like we've seen, you know, White House is down. Like we've seen movies like this, right? Where it's like, oh, America in peril. Right. And how, Um, and how many of those, I've, I've really got to pose this question. How many right. of those movies is the bad guy dragged crying and begging out from under a desk and it's filmed from a, a third person perspective of somebody casually anticlimactically shooting him in the chest mid mid beg mid plea and then they both kind of stand there for a second uncertainly and look like awkwardly at the camera That doesn't feel badass to me. I do not think this movie portrayed his death as badass. But it portrayed him as cowardly, and a lot of movies have done that. I think it portrayed. I think they portrayed him as human in that moment because he's not any different than what we saw our main characters do when Jesse Plemons was going to murder them. Oh yeah. For sure. Like, I think if you're watching the movie, we have seen people beg for their lives in the exact same way as he does at the end. And they were people we cared about. Right. I I just, I don't, I don't see how you watch that scene and are confused. I think because he's the powerful guy. He's the guy who caused it all to happen. You don't feel that empathy for him. If, for example, they did a thing where he was also there with his family That's and they true. killed his family they too. They maybe should have done that. They, well, they, they do. should have done that. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that it... it There's a couple... I, I'm not saying hmm. that its message was necessarily bad. I'm saying that it didn't do a good job. Let me it throw failed. a couple of images at you. There's there's one real quick one that I that I that that really hit me. Um, it's when they're breaching the White House and they're walking through, it's, it's before they get to the press briefing room, um, and they enter one of the rotundas and it's two, two uh, people, two staffers laying in the middle of, of the hall. And that was great. They, the, the woman at least has clearly shot herself. Yeah. That's an MS. It looks like an old MS. Yeah. Me, it's a fucking like, that's an incredible it's Nazi image. bunker. Yeah. It's Nazi, it's Nazi bunker. bunker sure. sure. But it's, it's also, I mean, yeah. No, no, I loved that. It was a fascinating idea. But yeah, it's Nazi bunker, right? Which is like, it's all going to hell. They say right before they go into the White House, they're like, it's it's just the Secret Service. Like, the war is over. It's just this one building, yeah. basically. It's just, it's just the <laughs> Secret just Service. And they say it's just the Secret Service. And um, I forget how they describe them. But Patriots, and like basically. His, yeah, it's basically his staff. Um, and like everybody's jumped ship, it looks like. And I yeah, think they say, I think they suicides. say true believers, something right. like that. Yeah. And I think, by the way, I think this is a powerful message to our leaders because I think that's the thing is it is weirdly enough. I actually think this is a, a fairly optimistic take on a civil war. And what I mean by that is this movie, it shows the ending. It shows like, okay, you want a third term? We're going to drag you out behind your desk and shoot you. But what happens you next, know? Dave? What? But what happens next, Dave? I know, I know, I know. But like, I don't think people are thinking about that. No, they're clearly not. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. I don't <laughs> think audiences are thinking about that. And that's what I mean by like where it ends. Um, It sort of ends where any adventure or action movie would end. Bad guy dies. We got we got him. We got him. We got the bad guy. He was on the TV making the speeches. Yes, but it's not. That's 
it doesn't end the same way that Demolition Man ends. <laughs> like, no. it doesn't, it's not it's not optimistic when it ends. No, of course not. But it hits all the same beats. It hits all those beats. Yes, along and the I way. think that's on purpose, Dave. It might be. I just don't think it works. That's fair. I I do not think it worked because of that reason. I think it it's it's almost too satisfying the story. Um, it gives the audience exactly what they want. I don't know what it's, to say it's to a, that. <laughs> like it's almost it too satisfying. <laughs> It does. It gives them every beat along the way that until you'd until see. you think about it for thirty seconds with like any amount of uh, critical thinking. Like, I, I I totally understand what you're saying. I totally understand what you're saying. I I don't. I mean, what I'm hoping is that everybody came out of it feeling that feeling that I did, because then that I think that's also the point, right? The point of the movie is what you're saying. It is to show this adventure. Where and, it's yeah, horrifying. And, and have you not feel good about it at the end? Right. What I'm saying is I don't think most people felt that way. I, or rather, I'm scared that most people didn't feel that way. I don't think people are going to necessarily get that from this. Uh, because I think we're, we're so... Uh, I don't know. It, it's I it's mean, hard I know, to rattle an audience. I know, I know Americans certainly I mean, are, were so divided... Like we've pointed out, you can hear the Antifa massacre and come away with it with two different, completely different interpretations. Um, even though the movie, as we said, the movie seem, seems to pretty heavily indicate that this is a right wing president. But like, it kind of ultimately doesn't matter. Uh, no. It, 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 because that's for all the reasons that we just described. Yeah, I think... I just, I, I, just don't, I don't know. I don't think to me, just real quick. I think to me, I don't think, I, I wonder if that's a failing of the movie or if it's just that's a, it not being understood in this particular time, because how many movies and books and other pieces of art have come out that were not understood in their time? Oh, for sure. That's what I was saying. 30 years from now, for sure, it'll yeah. probably be yeah. looked at different. Yeah. But right now, this film coming out when it came out and what he's trying to do if this is supposed to be a message for America, it is falling on deaf ears. And it is, I think, unfortunately designed that way. I think if you want to rattle people um, and actually make them go like, why did that happen? I think you have to attack it narratively. Yeah, um, you have to, you really, to, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Spoiler, spoilers for the Sopranos, everyone skip ahead. If you haven't watched it. Tom, you've seen it, right? Everybody knows how it is. All right. <laughs> the, the ending of the Sopranos is, was very controversial when it came out because it just sort of ends. Tony Soprano is in a restaurant. His family's there. He's listened to some journey like we all have. Mm -hmm. He looks up to see his daughter walk in and the episode ends. And originally the creator wanted to have about three minutes of blackness. And he wanted to make it very clear, but they had the HBO was like, no, you're not doing that. Just cut to credits. And what it's symbolizing is the fact that in that moment, Tony Soprano is assassinated. He's dead. Yeah, you don't know you're dead when you die. Exactly. His story it is just over. stops. Your story just stops. And, you, and you're watching seasons of him killing people. And you realize that's what he was doing this whole time to these people. We got all wrapped up in the adventure and story of this mobster. We've kind of forgot. And so, like, by telling us, no, it's done. Shutting off the lights. It's over. He's dead. They essentially blue ball us. And people got mad. That's and it was, what it pissed people death off. is. <laughs> exactly. No country <laughs> for all men does a similar tragic. thing. tragic. It's because you die in the middle of life. <laughs> exactly so for example With so many uh, like, things left unfinished <laughs> right so like if this movie really wanted to kind of make a commentary about that the moment i'm not saying they should have done this exact thing because it's sopranos did it but then you end the film after kristen dunst shot you say you don't get to see it doesn't matter what does it matter um you do something to upset the audience that little that girl jesse Plummer should have killed her she should like because they set up characters specifically to die we don't feel those we i mean they're great performances so we feel that scene don't get me wrong but like if you really wanted to rattle audiences i think you have to rattle them narratively otherwise you're still giving them 
what they want. And that's what I mean. You're giving them a full story Skill, uh, yeah. where the characters you start with are the characters you end with and people die heroically and some people don't and there's character arcs. Um, and so I, I just think, I think you're right the, of the intent of this movie for sure. I just think that it's, it's going, it's almost accidentally designed to distract people from that intent because the setting it also in an American civil war is such a loud thing Everybody online is arguing about that, right? Of like, oh, the movie is not taking sides. How could it? Or, oh, these people are clearly Republicans. And these are, no, these people. Like, I feel like all that I'm shit I'm curious to see how international critics and audiences um, interpret the movie. Right. Because, yeah, going back to the start, I think this is a very well-made movie. And I, I mean through and through. Um, yeah, I think... And this is my interpretation. It feels like he went for a certain type of subver- subversion, right? Right. Like presenting this story with the familiar beats and and structure and character relationships, but it's it's all for a. Uh, uh, this is the la- <laughs> ironically, um, I say this ironically because uh, Kaylee Spaney plays a very Ellie like character in this in this movie, but it's it's similar to The Last of Us, right? Where it gives us like the same kind right. of beats and narrative thrusts of a traditional American hero story, but we don't feel good about it. Like they don't hit exactly the same way. Um, I think that's what he was going for. Um, yeah, and I'm I not. I'm think... not going to say it was the wrong thing, but I definitely agree with everything that I've I've read from uh, uh, American uh, reviews of it and just anecdotal experience in my theater and your theater, it seems like it was, it's not effective on mainstream American audiences. I don't think so. And I think that's why it can be a very good movie and also failing to do what it wants because it, so I don't want to be mean to people and say it's underestimating people or because here's the thing. It is a movie. And what I like, there's a, I read, I saw an Alex Garland interview where he's talking about like January 6th as it relates to this movie. And he, he was talking about, you know, there's a scene where the Lincoln Memorial is is blown up, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, I wanted to show people that, like, horror. I wanted to show people the horror, and so I chose monuments. In my theater, people just went, oh, shit. But you know why? It's not their fault. We've seen monuments explode a million times in movies. Yeah. We, it's it's the gag of Independence Day. We're used to America exploding in movies. It. I don't think it's the fault of the people watching that they are aware they're watching a movie, right? Um, You can like, and and I guess that's what I mean is the people watching, they're watching a movie. They're having fun with it. They're enjoying the movie. The only way to rattle someone then is to ruin the movie. You have to ruin their movie for them. If you want them to, that's why I was thinking like watching this the whole time. I was like, yeah, people are just loving this. It's like people are really enjoying this movie about America's descent into civil war. About how America had a near miss coup and is pretending like it didn't for the past four years. But that's what's very funny. The storming of the White House at the end of the movie is just the fucking footage from January 6th. Right. It like I you said at the beginning he wrote this before it sure this movie was not fucking made before January sixth because it's all over the movie yeah they knew what they were doing yeah it's there it's that's all the that, that's the loudest thing this movie is saying it's like we have come to the brink of civil war and we're still we're pretending that it didn't happen and, and we're, I, we're doing these weird arguments on cable television these semantic arguments over whether or not we actually saw what we saw like that's right. what this movie is indicting. I'm worried about I'm worried that this movie accidentally does the opposite. So you know um who's it, that guy? The guy who made funny games. How he talked about well, I was how gonna he say never Starship made... Troopers, but yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. Um how he said the director of funny games said he'd ne- Michael never Haneke, make a movie I think. about Michael Haneke? I think so. Yeah. There's a very famous clip that because for other reasons where he says he'd never make a movie about the Holocaust. And he talks about the moment you Moveify, moveify, sure, something tragic like that, you're trivializing it. And I think the example he gave was the idea of the shower heads and showing like these moments of suspense. I think he was talking about Schindler's he List. He was, yeah. Where it's like, is the water going to come out or is gas? The moment you're making a cinematic version of that, 
it feels trivialized to him. This is his. Yes, uh, this is that, not his exact. Words. I mean, and that is a that is a dis- I mean, that's a discussion that's at the heart of this movie too. Like Absolutely. it's that. Yeah, that's a long, long discussion. But the movie uh, is ironically about that, and also might do that, right? Like it's it's about oh, Americans are so used to this idea of violence. Let's make a movie about it. And then Americans are watching the movie just being like, yeah, this is fun. (laughs) Because we watch movies. I think there's this, there's a disconnect between what we watch in movies, right? In reality. Like when I watch a movie, it's, I have a different, you know, it's different from watching something real violence happening versus movie violence, no matter how real the movie makes it. Right, but you have um, a logistical center of your brain that yeah. engages with the movie on a certain wavelength, uh, understanding what the movie is putting down. Right, <laughs> like right. You don't you don't watch this movie the same way you watch a Friday the Thirteenth movie. No, of course not. And this movie has some horrifying violence. Don't get me wrong. Like I think he is going for it a little bit. He is trying to show the violence. He is a little, yeah, as grounded is. and horrifying. I'm just still it just, not it never, sure. It never he lingers on it. it. It's always like it, it makes it feel very um, like we're witnessing it, as opposed to really lingering or luxuriating on it as like creating an image for film. Right. <clears throat> I just ultimately we keep talking about it as being like we think the intent is this, or like he's laying the like. I just think ultimately it it doesn't accomplish what it wanted to do, and I think a lot of that is just the the basic idea of taking an idea and making it a movie putting it in movie form having character right, you can't having... you can't i mean yeah you also can't control how people react to a thing of course um, i don't know i mean <sighs> but if the purpose of making a movie is to make your audience feel a certain way right That's the thing is like, if you wanted the audience to feel like a civil war in America is a bad thing um, and to feel revolted by it, you kind of have to make a movie that's fundamentally revolting. And the problem with that is people don't go see your movie. (laughs) You don't go see the revolting movie, right? You don't go see the really upsetting movie or the movie that's narratively fucked up. Right, because I think where maybe he lost his way, which is ironic because it's a thing that this movie seems to be saying very loudly is that you can't shock people with images. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't think you can not in movies. We've seen it all. Not right? in real fucking life, Dave. Yeah. Not in real life. Like again, like point. this movie is more about Gaza, I think, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, of course he started writing it before that happened too, but like, I mean, not before the whole conflict was, I don't know. It's, it's a whole, Thing. It's also A24 saying this was their dabble into blockbusters. They were like, we want to make a blockbuster. And I'm like, I'm not sure this should be considered a blockbuster. I mean, this is like, my theater experience. I had three younger people sitting uh, in front of me, and they got up right. and left 20 minutes in. Wow. Yeah, probably because they thought it was going to be It was going to be like an action exciting. movie or like an Independence Day type movie, and that is not what this is. <laughs> right. Well, that's yeah, that, and that's the and thing. And I think like, that's interesting to talk about. Is that there, there again? I'm in. I'm inferring a lot, but is there? It sounds like your audience was sort of primed for that too. Is this being received as like a Roland Emmerich movie? <laughs> exactly, because well, you think about it. Roland Emmerich did a movie about climate change, and he did a movie like, about the White House getting attacked. Right. That's what I mean. Is like. Making a movie like, oh, we got to teach Americans how bad this is. Let's show that, like, Washington getting blown up. And it's like, yeah, okay, we've seen it. Hold on. Like, I, to be fair, that is not why Roland Emmerich made a single one of his movies. He you know, did not I'm make his movies to movie. educate Americans. This movie. I'm saying this movie. Right. Is, yeah. Like, we've seen it a million times. So, like, that idea where he said, like, in the interview, I wanted to show our monument, like, the National Monument is getting blown up to, like, show that shock. It's just like, I don't think that's going to do it, man. I, 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 we've seen it. We've seen so many movies I mean, about the this most... stuff. Emmerich's a great example of someone who kind of trivialized everything. Existential disasters. Again, climate change. <laughs> I mean, the, he'd, the he'd, slow uh, death of been, the planet. We've been fucking he made doing an action that since, movie since Earthquake and the Towering Inferno. Like, I mean, Absolutely. I think he might be the first person to blow up the White House. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he might, he, that might actually be a piece of Hollywood trivia, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
And boy, did he. My, I remember oh, when that so happened. Cool, in the movie. It was so cool, man. It was so fucking the theater, cool. <laughs> my audience cheered when Independence Day when the White House exploded. I mean, it was the it was the it was the button to every trailer. Like it was yeah. it was the thing oh, yeah. they showed. It was the fucking unbelievable thing that you had to see a fucking spaceship blowing up the White House. That's awesome. Yeah, it's terrific. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's, there's an additional wrinkle to that, right? It's not just the White House exploding. It's a spaceship blowing up the White House. Um, so I, I don't know. I think there's a lot. There's a lot of, like, I think he, I think Alex Garland, like, successfully identified something, but maybe didn't quite pull off his indictment of it that well, because it's clear that, like, there is this thing um, in American culture where we're just sort of, and maybe it's just me, I don't know, please chime in, but it feels no. like we're like uniquely numb to some of this shit in a way oh, that yeah. other countries aren't. And a lot of it is because we've never been invaded. Um, really? I mean, the war of 1812, get the fuck out of here. But other than that, right. um, like, yeah. I don't know. It's, oh, absolutely. It's, I, mean, I mean, you saw how we reacted to 9-11, right? Right. Like the thing, is like, right. Yeah. The thrust of this movie is that there's not been a modern military conflict on American soil. And boy, does it fucking show in, in the way that some people behave. So, yeah. I mean, neither is a lot of like a lot of countries also. I know, had... but none of them are in the unique position that America is, oh, where no, they no. get we, to we dictate it... which wars get fought in the yes, world. We, we give it out. We give it out <laughs> all the time. No, and I think that's the thing is like... I don't think this is a movie for Americans, honestly. Uh, I even think it even means... though... Yeah, maybe. I, well, I think it was, but like, maybe he... I don't know. It just It was a movie for Americans, but not made by an American, so he I think didn't... I got muddled. He didn't understand... Like, the cultural stuff necessary. Like, I think you're right. You know Fucking what I would have loved to see in this movie? People notice it more. What's that? Yeah. Drone strikes. They I mention see them, the f- but we need to see them more. Yeah. I want to oh. see the fear that drones cause. If the idea but is, the idea look is at all these American losing, weapons. So. I think, so what I had, I guess hoped is the weird word. What I had expected for this film is some of it to be like, we have all this advanced weaponry that we use on other countries all the time. Well, let's have Americans see what that's like. Like, let's show Americans what that's like, and what they really let's show Americans what that, it's yeah. like to have your family killed. You know, like let's show Americans w- then what those horrors are like that we are inflicting on other uh, countries. Yeah, that is a that is a genuine failing because the again, I don't know what he was thinking, but like the only reason I can think not to include that because they do include they mention drones. They mentioned like, oh, what is the president? How does the president? Has the president's view on using drone strikes against American citizens evolved at all in the right. past fifteen months? But that's all they say about it. I feel like maybe the the only reason to admit to omit uh, like a drone strike scene where the characters are are fucking hiding from a drone. If you've ever seen uh, them or heard accounts of drone strikes in real life, they're terrifying. Uh, yeah. It's like being stalked. Um, I feel like the reason he didn't include that was because it would have been too clear who the bad guy was. Yeah, and that's that's, true. that's a failing, right? Because like, like I keep saying, this feels more about Gaza. Well, if he really wanted to make a movie about Gaza, he should have had fucking drone strikes in it. Yeah, I think so. And if you really want Americans watching a movie to feel what it means to lose someone, I think that you have to do that narratively again. I think you need to like set up a character that you fully expect to have a fully, you need to Aerith that son of a bitch. You need to have her get stabbed by Sephiroth uh, 25 minutes in. Yep. I (laughs) I kept thinking about the movie children of men. Yes. Yeah. When Julianne Moore gets killed in the very beginning, spoilers for children of men. Children of men, I think does a very good job at showing this idea, which is that, or, or later, that woman who just gets black bagged and we never see her again. She was a major character. We don't get to see her die. We see Michael Caine get shot in the background. Like it's yep. so ev- pretty much every ma- even oh god, we're spoiling all of all of Children Men. Even when Clive Owen dies at the end, you don't even really spend time with him. It cuts away exactly. From him. And I think that movie did a better job at showing 
that because it was fo- it was following the woman like the football so it was like as she was getting passed from person to person so it was just leaving the other people behind because she was the important thing so it's like that and that idea is very much present in civil war right because it's the yeah. uh, the idea of we have to record this for the people that are left behind there's something that i wanted to bring up and i'm glad that i remembered it here right at the end yeah. the very first thing we see um, is that uh, EPA truck that's that's down to give people electricity, I think, and it gets bombed. It gets bombed by somebody. Um, much like the opening of Children of Men. Much like Go the on. opening of Children of Men, yes. Um, but it's all this life. Like, there's a fully realized pop song playing in the soundtrack. It's all this noise. There's all these people taking photographs. It's a big cluster throng of people. And then the bomb goes off, and it's Saving Private Ryan's Us for a brief second. It doesn't do the tinnitus thing for very long. Thank God, because I actually have tinnitus. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but it just goes completely quiet. And for the remainder of the scene, the only sounds you hear are the shutter clicks of Kaylee Spaney's camera and Kirsten Dunn's camera. So it's like, this is the silence. And in the silence that follows your death, the only thing there's going to be is the documentation of it. Like that's what that's. So the movie is very much talking about that idea. So it's, it's, it's weird that they didn't, include that yeah yeah i again i think it's a lot of these ideas but i don't think i think he i think he kind of missed it a little bit i mean it's such a big idea and i think he did a really good job of keeping it as focused as it was but i i do th- you know now that we've talked about it i think you're right i think he should have played with the narrative some more yeah um, he should he very, should have it's a very good movie for what it is it's very well made he should have again he should have killed off scene. dunst or spaney very early yeah, I think so. I think, I think that would have been the way. To, her, that her would have been one way to do it. Yeah, shot her in the head. Um, or I want the ending to be that the young photographer turns in the photos and they look at it and go black and white and they throw them all out. They go, no one shoots that. Black would have and white, been that idiot. actually would have been really good if they had one last <laughs> scene where we get to see how much money she got for it and it's like three hundred dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are like you get a credit. Yeah. Uh, that would have been that, uh, honestly that would have been a perfect a, a really great ending like i think the oh, yeah. ending that the movie has is really good but i think that ending would I have think, also been great <laughs> yeah i think the ending again i uh, i like I, everything's very well made um it's all like every scene individual scene is fascinating i couldn't look away right obviously um i am still like that ending still felt weird to me because it just felt like I was like, oh, were, was that what we're here for? Like, like the moment where it's like, and it's done when this happens. Well, wait, you, you know, just, and it's you like you said you were waiting. The whole, you you did say that's the thing we were waiting the whole movie to see was them storming the White House and killing it. the president. That's why you don't show it. That's why you don't you take that away. That's what I mean. Well, I mean, is the whole mm, movie is about we got to get to the president. I think he I think he made an attempt. Like I described, I think he right. staged that scene as whack ass and ignoble and wrong as he could yeah i'm just wondering if we needed to see it at all um i don't know i like that we saw it i personally exactly. like that. i like that we saw it personally yeah well it's satisfying right well it's satisfying to me um not in a fist pumping way but it's satisfying right. to me in a conclusion to the story that i think i was being told it might have been fast. I, going back to like maybe his family should have been there. It's such a this is such a dark conversation, but it's like maybe they should have shot some children right there too next to him. I think that would have been wild. And that, that is might have that is people. another that is another thing this movie leaves out. And again, I have to mention it because I keep saying this movie feels more closely tied to Gaza. We do not see any dead kids. No, we don't. That is a huge, huge toll of wars waged in this fashion. That yeah. if you really wanted to make a movie about a civil war that's going to shock Americans, you should fucking show that. Right. And so I think if the commentary... that will 1,000% be a cost. If, if, if the commentary is that we always put violence through this movie machine and we see it through a lens and if the if it's a satire if he's doing like the starship troopers where he's like and so am i gonna do that i don't think that works because then you just did the thing right um and so if you're not showing yeah if you're really not exploring these things like the drone strikes dead kids like you know more and more brutality the stuff that's truly going to upset people then that's why i'm like i i don't know man i think maybe this movie is kind of a wash mm-hmm. ultimately because it i don't kind wanna... of peeved a lot of people up 
and before an election, it's sort of falling on deaf ears. And maybe again, maybe like 30 years from now, 20 years from now, if we're still around, uh, yeah. we'll look back and go like, that was a really good movie. That was really good. Um, but I, I don't think it's effective ultimately. That's fair. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a wash. Um, I think it's an effective movie. I am very curious to see how people outside of America respond to it. Yeah. Um, because I hope it's yeah, not a I'm wash, not, yeah, you know? I don't, yeah, I'm not sure that like, that was basically... like releasing, like releasing this in an American election year is like, I feel like that's kind of part of the indictment of the movie, right? It's like, well, who are right. you? Like that's one election. You you know what's fucking happening in 2024 already? <laughs> like, <clears throat> I don't right. know. It's like it's this this movie is also like uniquely about how like America can exist like it's the only country in the world. Oh yeah. Like this movie is very much about that because they do not mention another country a single time except for Canada once. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. their currency is Oh, better. well, they mentioned, he asked where people are from. For the record, that's that's a funny, so this is a trailer thing um, when they say we're Americans and Jesse Plemons says, what kind, kind of, of Americans? Americans? Yeah. And then they cut it in with, you don't know, they don't know. And those are two different conversations. He was asking her why, where she's from is the show me state. And yeah. so what he's actually Missouri. asking, Missouri is the show me state. <laughs> yeah. He's specifically asking a guy if he's from South America or here because he's shooting everybody who just says, I'm not like who basically isn't American. That's what he's doing in that scene. And yeah. So he's Joel, asking, Joel says I'm American. He's like central South and he's, and eventually he says, he which says American Florida. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just thought that was interesting. Cause yeah, the, yeah. the trailer makes it a different question in a weird way where it's like, what side are you on? And you're, it's, it's not about like, that's what I thought made that scene even more interesting. And what made Jesse Plemons so terrifying is that like, you don't really know what he wants. You know, you don't know what he's after at at first, because when he says what America, you think like, Oh, when, if someone says the wrong state, are, is he going to shoot him? Then you realize like, no, as long as you're just from a state, he's right, not going to shoot because, you. Because um, Joel says Florida, he, which is one of the secessionist states, and he's like, okay. And then yeah. Spaney says Missouri, and then he goes into the show me state question. And then Dunst says Colorado. All three of those are secessionist states, I believe, in the And film you realize, he, oh, okay, he doesn't care. He doesn't what does care. he care about? Well, at least, moment, I'm, I'm sorry, says, at least Florida, Florida definitely is a secessionist state in the, in the movie. Yeah. So, yeah, he doesn't care about that. And then, like, the stuff, like, you don't know, it, like, it's actually... Interestingly, in the movie, he's asking her why they call Missouri the show me state. And she says, I don't know. And he says, you don't know? You don't have any idea? Yeah, that's pretty American. So it's like, it's not yeah. like he's agreeing that that's an American thing to be completely ignorant of a thing, which feeds into the theme of the movie, Dave, yep, in addition does. to being a great moment, a great little bit for that thriller scene, because we don't know what he's after. That scene is incredible. It's an incredible, incredible fucking scene. It's, I was waiting for him the whole movie. And as soon as I sh- he showed up, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then that scene started. I'm like, this is a good scene. <laughs> this is I know, tense. I, like I said, I knew he was coming when they showed the other two guys because I was like, he's gonna Jesse Plumbers is definitely gonna kill some people in his scene. And they they bring up these two guys like 30 minutes of the movie. They're just like, hey, we're having a great time. And I'm like, oh, you are dead meat. Yeah, those two guys are gonna <laughs> you die. Are, yeah, you are two dead dudes. Um, and sure enough, that's what happens. Although I will say um, that like out of our core cast of four characters. Two of them die. It's probably not the two you expect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it kind of is, it's to half be honest. Of, I mean, it's definitely one half of them. Yeah, um, I mean, and he dies heroically again. Yeah, right? he, um, yeah, yeah. Heroically, but, like, also, but also not. Like, it, it is, but like when they're looking at the aftermath of, aftermath of his death, when he's just a dead body in a car, right? and they're just watching these people clean the blood off and carry a stretcher up and very officially load him out of the car. Like, I had a similar experience when I watched them carry my mom out of the house when she passed. It's like this right. weird... It's fucking weird when it happens. And, like, I, oh, yeah. I experienced that again, and I, I'm sure it was intentional because he staged it very much that way. Like, it's preceded by there being very emotional that Sammy is dead, and then we're, it cuts to the very official uh, uh, antiseptic uh, uh, right. implications of him being dead. Well, that means four guys have to load him onto a stretcher. It means we have to clean out the car. It means we have to do X, Y, and Z. You know, 
he be, he, think, he becomes a bunch of uh, forms as opposed to a person. Right. I think it would have been more powerful and going back to children, children of men where people are just killed. Um, if he was one of the people that Jesse Plemons just executed, I think that's, that's the more powerful, like shocking thing, right. Is to have a character just sort of like killed for nothing. Like, I think, um, you could argue that I think that's what it is about the ending is that she gets the shot and that means it's all for something. You know what I mean? Like it's technically like, oh, they did it all. One of like, them says that saying. line. One of them says that line. Like if right, we don't get and, the shot, it means Sammy died for nothing. Right. And maybe Sammy should have died for nothing. Maybe that would have been more powerful. You know, like somebody probably should have. One of the main characters should have probably. I think so. I don't know. Like I really liked. Like I said, I enjoyed the I movie. I mean, this still, scene by this scene, still, it's very good. Like, this movie made me. <sighs> think a think a lot of different things about a lot of different things like this 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 yeah. movie to me um was a decently i don't want to say profound because it wasn't it didn't really well it gave me some new per, it gave me new perspective on some things that i already knew and or suspected right so it's well made again it's very well made it it might be one of his best made movies watching it in combination with watching it with a very packed theater and a very active audience that's what it is. So I came out of the movie very conflicted. And like when I got home, like I, I was like sitting there for a second thinking about it and I was thinking about it. I was very quiet. And I've been thinking about it for, you know, a That's day. That's probably a sign and of a of a halfway decent movie. For sure. But what I was thinking about, what was eating at me, was the movie I watched compared to the audience I was in. Where it was like no different than if that's, we were watching a Marvel that's film. That's the indictment, isn't it? Exactly. Yep. And that's why I came out of the movie ultimately going and then looking online at all the chatter, all the people, the Andy No stuff, yep. which is very upsetting in a movie that's also kind of politically trying to be politically neutral. Again, it's like, but they sourced footage from Andy No. Yes. But that's such a that's like, again, I, I don't think it's they did it on purpose, but that's such a bummer when you're also trying to be politically vague because, uh, you know, there's this pattern of centrism always kind of leaning towards fascists right and so to be politically fl- bit vague and then it's like Cent- by centrism Andy really only helps fascists but yes exactly <laughs> and that's what the thing this movie at least helped a fascist propagandist get a credit get a little more legitimate right maybe he got paid for it a little bit and so like there's that on top of it on top of like coming out of this movie and going like this was really well made. I'm not sure it worked. Like, I'm not sure this movie worked. And in fact, I'm worried now that it did more bad than good. Um, because it, I don't know if it worked and seeing all the chatter around the, the politics, the fact that it's a civil war, like it almost feels like there's so many different loud things in the movie that whatever message he wanted to get out, is just buried. That's my that's my worry about this movie. Here's the last thing I want to say. <clears throat> yeah. There is a shot of an overpass in Pittsburgh that has ghost stealers spray painted on it and two human bodies hung underneath it. Yes. That's the movie. And I'm done. I have nothing else yeah. to say. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. Again, I, I do want to stress, don't take black and white photos, folks. If no, you're take a color photos, you jabroni. If you yeah, want to make you money... Like? such a fucking yeah, shit, jerk. shit thing to do going through her black try and to white be photos. an artiste try to make some money yeah seriously seriously throw out that photo of the president getting shot yeah black Don't and white need come it. on send it to t to turner send it to ted turner to colorize it yeah uh yeah i got nothing else i'm i'm i was hoping we'd have a very good conversation about this movie and i think we did, I think we did um, yeah yeah because this is a this is kind of a big one um, a lot of emotions around this movie and I still kind of come out of it in this mix of emotions. Um, yes, but I, I, the one thing that I, 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 well, not the one thing, but one thing I still feel very confidently saying resolutely is that this is not an apolitical film. Yes, I, I agree with that. I think that's the one, the one criticism I keep seeing again. So like, yeah, so 
the idea that the, even the reporters aren't political at the end he, he's standing over the president and he says can i get a quote and he says don't let them kill me and he's like that'll do he doesn't he wants like he just wants they his want quote. The, he just wants to document it he's it's, oh but it's he the, also yeah. wants that motherfucker to die i think because i think one of the things the movie comes down on and i was really happy it does this is that the reason why it's not apolitical is because i think we are absolutely meant to look at the president and go this is his failing fuck him right he is like you said Muammar Gaddafi he is the tyrant right and I was very scared I was referring that this movie... more to the images of Muammar Gaddafi being dragged into the street and dismembered oh yeah but they're treating him they even compare him that way to like a dictator they say like well uh, like Sammy, dicta- like Sammy mentioned. mentions it as in as in this is what you're gonna see right but I think there's no question as to the fact that the president is the problem you know what I mean? Mm, I disagree, but really, yeah, it's un- well, he's, never, th- he's going for a third term. He's going for a third he term. He dissolved yeah. the FBI. He dissolved the FBI. Like, it's it's but it's it's unclear what says ultimately this what, is a tyrant. But we don't know if he start. I mean, FDR went for four terms. It right. wasn't illegal yet, but like uh, like extenuating circumstances, like I could see them electing. Uh, we don't know if he was elected for a third term while the war was happening. Like it's. I don't know. I don't think it's. I think it's clear he was right wing, but it, I think I don't know yeah, because I, not, I also think the characters don't give a fuck about him. They're I think the characters. Yes, they're past. The, feel, they are clearly past the point of giving a fuck. Like it's been going they, on for I long feel enough. Like they want this guy to die. I think that's the vibe I got. With they're like, yeah, fuck this guy. Like he failed. You know, he he they're, fucking. They're definitely not sentimental about the president being killed. That's for sure. Yeah, and so that's the vibe I got is that. I didn't like I saw some stuff about them being like the reporters being impartial. They never felt impartial to me because they only I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're almost always when they're um, reporting, they're always they're almost always with Western forces, right? No. Oh, really? No, they're usually with the army. Oh, yeah. I guess it was hard to tell. The, the only time sometimes. they aren't is wh- is in the very end. When they storm the White House? Yeah. Oh, OK. All right, I guess they were again, and I think that's intentional because it's like when yeah. they get to Plemons, like they're like when they're when they see that he's holding Spaney and the other guy, um, they're like, well, we'll just go down there, and that like they're they're U.S. forces, we'll be able to show them our press passes, and Sammy's like, no, they will fucking shoot you. Like I am getting a death vibe from those those. Oh, what right. he says is those guys are doing things that they don't want people to see. That's interesting like. because they never they never are met with resistance. Like they just sort of show up on the front lines and then because he does does give that warning, but it's well because they, they, yeah, they go in with the Western forces. Like they go in when the Capitol's been breached. There's nobody checking oh, okay. IDs at the Capitol anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they make it you know they make it clear that like journalists getting into DC is like they're executing journalists in DC, which is another hint and a half that it's a right wing president. Right. Um, but, well, they, all right. They start uh, like they're, they're, which feels like it's part of the the allied states or whatever the the president's side, right? Mm-hmm. Technically, mm-hmm. but it's just clear that they have no yeah they, they have, have no, no allegiance, allegiance really. Have. Yeah, it's just we're Americans. We're just trying to live, right? Whoever well, there's the a go- whole part I mean, of that. I mean, and that's sniper. every one of these fucking conflicts, right? It's like we're just trying to fucking live in this country when whoever's in charge of the government decides to stop shooting at each other and figure out who's in charge now. Right, that happens. There's a scene with a sniper where they basically it's great state scene. that. Oh yeah, where they're like, "Who's who, giving you who orders?" There's who's nobody giving us you? our orders. There's a guy in that house shooting at us. We're trying to and shoot. We're gonna shoot him. And I love like at the end of like the sniper hasn't said a thing. They're just crouching down, talking to his spotter the whole time, trying to figure out what's going on. And the sniper finally says, "Will you guys shut the fuck up?" Yeah. And then he pulls the trigger and says. I've got news. great news. <laughs> and then the <laughs> yeah. scene ends and they're just on the road. So you know what's they're happened. He road. killed the guy and they were able to get out of there. Great scene. Great scene. <laughs> this movie is really well made. It's very well made. I mean, it's a road. Yeah. It's it's ultimately it's a road trip movie. So it's just a it's just a series of sketches, really, um, yeah. about the end of America. Yeah. And what that might look like. Um, yeah. I don't need to say All anything right. else about it. I've probably been gotten into deep trouble with lots of people now 
<laughs> I don't think we've said anything controversial. Not anything more controversial than this film, Dave. The no. most controversial film of the season. We should invade Canada. Probably. I mean, I don't think that's controversial either, to be honest. No, I we should just been take up there it. long enough doing? looming over us. In this movie, yeah, their money's worth more than it. ours. That's not right. No. <laughs> Get them. <laughs> All right, folks. Listen, thanks for listening. Thank you. Uh, we have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y. Unemployed. Um, we watch movies every Friday night. That's a big thing we do. You can you can watch movies with us. It's not just me and Tom. I'm not just advertising that me and Tom watch movies together. No, we, we have a movie night on Discord. We also have exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Star Trek The Next Futurama, Spiel Boys. Um, those are all for $5 a month. Patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. Give it a, give it a look-see. Give it an old spin. Um, we also have a store. Head over to GamefullyUnemployed.com where you can find a link to our Teespring store where we have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs you can get on t-shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all sorts of things. So slap your little telephoto peepers onto that. Mm-hmm. They have very long mm-hmm. lenses in this film. Too long. Well, I mean, you want them if you're on the front lines. It's too long. <laughs> I mean, That's why they that die. Close. But why. that means it's keeping them at arm's length, Dave. Arm's length from humanity at all times. Right. They need a GoPros. Just get a fucking GoPro, guys. Get a fucking drone. Why were there no drones? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> GoPros Start and the whole drones. conversation all over again. What's that? Skateboards. Skateboards as well. Yeah. RC cars. On skateboards. Oh, yeah. Dolphins. Uh, Put cameras onto dolphins will win the Civil War. We should watch Aquaman. We should. Hey, listen. Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can find him on Twitter.com as the Corlew or go to shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our channel artwork is produced by Michael Vincent Bramley. For more of his work, go to mvbramley.art. Our episode artwork is by Justin Brown, available on Twitter as Justin T. Brown or at artness by justinbrown.com. And finally, additional artwork is by Starlene Hodge. You can find her work at starlinearts.com or on Twitter as Starlene X. Cool. Goodbye.